What's going on guys? This is Kobe with Sample Source back with another video. If you don't know who I am already, I am a platinum and billboard music producer. Worked with some major artists, but what I'm more proud of is that I've been able to sustain a living online for about four years now. And also I've helped music producers to make over a hundred thousand dollars in combined income off of their side hustles and helped seven producers to make over two thousand dollars in a single month sustainably so in this video what i want to break down for you guys is my exact sales philosophy that helps me to sell beats in a very specific way and before we dive in i want to give you guys some free stuff that's going to change your life so what i want to give you is my exact dm script that i use on ig to convert people into phone calls to sell beats to so I'm gonna give you that and I'm gonna give you a private vault of trainings that's gonna include a mindset training as well as trainings on how to use my DM script specifically so that you can find success with it and get your open rates up on your DMs from like maybe 20% to 40% all the way up to 40% or even 70, 80% like some of my students have. So if you want all of that stuff for free, then DM me the word script on Instagram and I will send it over to you completely for free. Now let's dive into the video. So I wanna break down my process for you first. So if you're new to the channel and you don't know how I sell beats, I do not sell beats this way. So most people do it like this way. They upload a type beat to YouTube and then they push people to a BeatStars link and then BeatStars is basically the sales page. So they get the sale. So that is their funnel. There's nothing else to it unless they got like email marketing down here and some other things. So, uh, but we're not really worried about email marketing. So basically what my funnel looks like, what my sales strategy, is a little bit different. So what I'll do is I will go, and first I will go and find artist on IG. So first, this is a human being, in case you don't know. So I'm finding the human beings that are artists on Instagram. So from there, once I found the artist, I'm gonna send them a DM and walk them through nine certain, specific DMs that I send to them. Uh, and after I send those DMs, what I wanna do is get them onto an IG audio call. So I get them onto an IG audio call. And from there, I basically convince them to go into a Zoom call with me so that I can preview some beats, see if any of them are good fit, and then sell them to them. So then we head over to Zoom. And at the end of that call, that's when they pay me. A lot more complicated and you might say why would somebody do this it's because this did not work for me and so i was building youtube for quite a minute and it just wasn't working for me yeah i could have been more consistent all of these different things but i found something else that worked and i just went all in so if everybody is basically going down a river and let's say this is the river and youtube's over here and everybody is going this way then me, what I want to do, I want to actually turn around and then go this way. And so by going this way, there is zero people over here and there's infinite people over here. And so with that being said, that's why I use this process and it's allowed me to make thousands of dollars a month while 90% of people on YouTube don't make any money at all and they're getting very few views on their videos. So I'm going to break it down how I sell beats on these Zoom calls with you today, this is gonna be my sales philosophy. So if I'm trying to get sales on Zoom, I want to break down the exact framework that I use, and then we're gonna talk through the philosophy of how I get these sales. And I'm not talking about any little sales. So most people sell stuff from 30 to $100 for licenses. And so I want to keep in mind keep in mind that these are licenses. I'm not selling exclusives through these Zoom calls uh, unless they want to. I just sold like um, a custom beat for 800. But for the most part, I'm going to be selling non-exclusive offers that are anywhere from 250 to 1,000. And if I don't put any proof up on the screen, I apologize, guys. I'll try to make sure I put up uh, screenshots of some of those non-exclusive sales so that you can see what those look like. Um, so. Now that you know the kind of the price range that these fall between, I prefer to do this because it's just way bigger checks in my account and I have less transactions to look at to make sure I'm actually making as much money as I want every month. I don't like having these little sales because if I put in all of this work to get onto a Zoom call for 60, 90 minutes 
and all I get is like $30 or something like that, it's just not really going to be worth it for me. So once we get them on the call, close at the end, cool. So let's start off with how I start these calls off. So number one, on the intro, what I want to do is develop rapport. And so I also want to talk about like how long this is going to take. So rapport should be anywhere from one to five minutes. So a lot of people think that rapport is the reason why people buy beats. Now, I'm here to tell you today that they don't buy beats because of rapport. They buy beats from you because they trust you. And so if you're on a call with somebody, don't try to talk about um, everything about them for 30 minutes and think that that's going to be the reason they buy beats from you. It's not. So the main reason they buy beats is because you actually are a leader that can talk about like what's the best thing for their music career. And that's why they're going to trust you, honestly, because you can talk about why most people just don't care about them. And you can go and show them that you care about their career and the best steps to take. And if you're the best step for them to take, then you can go and plug your beats and then they'll buy them. So you do rapport for about one to five minutes. And next, what we want to do is something that's incredibly important. So if you don't do this step, then it's not even worth getting onto the call. So what you want to do is what's called framing the call. And so it's also called a pre-frame. But basically what this does is it allows them to view things the way that you view them. And so we want the, the next steps to be very clear. At the end of the call, we want them to pay us money. And so we wanted them to show up financially qualified, which they usually do uh, for me. And so if they do, I want them to pay me money at the end of the call. Way I do this, I'm going to be like, hey, like, I don't even care if you buy beats from me or not. So I'm diffusing any kind of pressure. They are like, okay, great, because I didn't know if I wanted to buy anything from you yet either. So I'm like, I don't care if you want to buy something from me or not. Honestly, it just doesn't even matter to me. But what really matters to me is that if we find some beats that you like, cool, we can move forward. If we don't, then just let me know. It will not hurt my feelings. And so if that sounds fair to you to keep it to a yes or no at the end of the call, um, is that fair? And if they say yes, then it's like, cool, successful frame. If they say no, then we know that we need to end the call because they have no intention of actually buying. So once you've done a frame, next thing that you want to do is you want to dive into what's called discovery. So discovery is essentially figuring out everything you need to sell beats. And so instead of talking and talking and talking, if you think that because you're good at talking, you're going to get sales, you're going to be in for a rude awakening. You want to open the artist up. And the way that people open up is not by you talking. It's by you asking questions. And so you want to ask different questions. So you want to figure out why they're there. So um, you want to clarify why they're there. So you're like, why did you even show up today? That would be like the first question. It's like, why? You know, why are you here? What, you know, what is the reason why you wanted to, you know, get some production from me? Whatever it is. So you clarify why they're actually there. And so what is what is their why? Like, why do they get up in the morning? Why do they make music? So you figure out what their reason for making music is. And that would be basically like any unfulfilled desires that they have where later on it's like, hey, I know you want to release music. I want to help you release music. And that's why they're going to buy from you. Uh, second reason why they would buy is pain points. And so to find pain, you might go and phrase it, the questions a little bit differently and tie it back into their music. But you want to figure out things like, you know, what is their past experiences like with making music? So I'll put past EXP. So you want to ask them questions about their past experiences and get them to open up about some negative experiences that they've had where they're jaded uh, from different experiences. And that's going to help you to develop trust because you can position yourself as bad guy is over here and then the and then the good guy is over here. This is the artist. So this is good. This is bad. You're like, well, these guys were bad. I'm the good guy. And then they're here. So hopefully they come over here and they think we're the good guy. And we should be because if you're selling them something that's just as bad as what someone sold them in the past, you shouldn't use this method. You need to be above average. You need to be the best. You need to be the best to actually do this. If you're really bad at selling at uh, selling beats, it could be for a variety of reasons. 
It could be because your, your beats are not that good. Like I want to be real with you. If your beats are not very good and you think that there's some kind of magic pill where you can just show bad beats to an artist and they want to buy that, then that's not a good approach. That's not a good mindset. So make sure that your beats are good. They're above average. And then you can lead them away from pain and lead them into a more pleasurable experience. So you should always be leading them away from things that are bad. So once you've done a really good discovery, you figure out everything you need um, in terms of information to actually sell them, then what we want to do is transition. So transition. So what this is, essentially is you're like, okay, from what I heard, I, th I think that, you know, I could help you to have a little bit better experience. I feel like I could help you to accomplish that goal that you have for this year. And so if you want, like what we can do, we can go through some beats, see if any of these are a good fit. Is that cool with you? And so if they want to, then it's like, awesome. You successfully transition into the preview stage. So now we're going to go and preview them some beats. And so you want to play them the beats that are as close to what they said. So um, these should be like beats that are specifically set aside for the artist almost. Like it's almost like a custom beat, exactly what they said. So you have to actively listen. You have to be good at this so that you can serve them things that they want to be served. And so if you do that and you give them that white glove experience, then what's going to happen is they're going to be like, dude, like these are the best beats I've ever heard in my life is exactly what I want, exactly what I need. And so once you've previewed the beats and you find some that you can set aside for them that they want, whether you're selling a custom, an exclusive, a beat pack, it does not matter. You can sell all of that this way. Once you've done that, you want to run them through a commitment phase. So after they previewed the beats, they should commit. And so if you haven't, com if they haven't committed yet, then what's going to happen is you bring up payment and they're going to say, let me think about it. Um, I don't have the money for it. All of that different kind of stuff. And you don't want to deal with that. Or, you know, I'll pay for the beats whenever I release the song. So we don't want to do that. We want them to be committed now. So you see how committed they are. It's see if you can get them as close to 100% as possible. And so once you've got them to about 100% or at least 80% committed, then what you want to do is move on to your pitch. So basically with, with uh, the pitch, what you wanna accomplish is a couple of things, but you wanna stack the value up. So you don't wanna just offer one beat, like that's not gonna be that valuable to somebody. Uh, you wanna make sure it's either multiple beats or you have like some bonuses, some guarantees, something like that. And so whenever you're doing something like that, uh, you wanna stack the value up first. So you're saying, you're getting A, um, you're getting B, you're getting C, and usually it's gonna be this price, so you give them uh, a really high dollar amount. So let's say usually it's gonna be 500, but what I wanna do is slash that up and say today it's gonna be this. So let's say it's 250. So I can give that all to you for just 250. So if you do it that way, then you stack the value up and they expect it to be super high, you drop the price down super low and they should be getting a really good value from this. So make sure it actually does make sense for the artist to pay uh, you $250 or more. And so um, that's how we're gonna hit this. You know, right here is stack the value up. So we're not selling MP3s and waves and stuff like that. It's gotta be unlimited, it's gotta be custom, it's gotta be exclusives. That's gonna be your offer. And so you do that. And you're like, um, you know, does that sound good to you? Does that sound fair? How do you feel about that? And if they're like, oh, that's too much money, all of that different kind of stuff, I'll get back with you. Let me get my budget together. You're going to move into the eighth step, which is called closing. And so not everybody is going to close or buy on the first uh, call, but to, to get them to buy whenever they say too much money, it's actually very, very simple. And so if it's truly too much money and they have some money, like they showed up and to the call and they said, I have some money to buy, I have some budget, then what we wanna do, we don't wanna take all their money, but we think they should do some of it. So what you wanna do is isolate the objection. So if they say too much money, first thing you wanna do when they say too much money is A, diffuse. You want to diffuse any kind of pressure to buy. So you're like, no worries. I definitely understand it's a lot of money. No problem at all. I definitely understand. So that's going to release any kind of tension. 
Second thing you want to do is isolate. So to isolate the objection, you're like, um, apart from the money side, was this something that you wanted to do? Very, very simple. So if they say, yeah, you know, I, I do want to do this, you know, it's just the money. Then the third thing you would do from there is say, okay, if we figured out the money aside, can we move forward? So if they say no, then you'll know that you have to follow back up and figure out when they can pay you. If they say yes, then what you want to do from here is essentially say like, oh, okay, cool. Well, like if you're open to it, I can go and break it down to something that works better for your budget. That cool with you. So basically the fourth step here is going to be to make a custom deal for them, break it down to them. So you don't wanna just go and name a payment plan that's preset, you want it to work with their budget. So once you say, I got something custom for you, if you're open to it and they say yes, then you want to work towards what's gonna be a good budget for them um, so that they can pay you either monthly or you can drop the price down to something that works for them so that you can go and get ahead and get paid for that. So this is the exact framework that I've used to help John to get to two and a half thousand, to help Jeremy to get to 2000 a month within four weeks and to help Manic to get to 2.7K within 45 days. And really, I wanna share the information with you so that you can apply it. And if you're not able to get the sales you want, then I'm available to give you one-on-one -on -one help so that you can implement this. So that's really what somebody would go into the program for. But what I want you guys to walk away from this video with today is some free resources to get you started, get the ball rolling. And then if you want help in the future or if you want help now, then there's an opportunity to work with me one-on-one -on -one, and that way I can get you to those goals super fast so that you can accomplish your goals and make this into something that is profitable instead of struggling to make money online. So what you can do is DM me the word script on Instagram and you're gonna get my exact DM script. There's gonna be nine steps to get them onto a phone call and you're also gonna get a private vault of trainings so that you can get the right mindset and you can also get the right information as well. And then if you wanna work with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can book a free consultation and we can do a strategy call. So uh, hopefully this video was helpful to you guys and helps you to move forward and make more money. And I will see you guys in the next video.